Do you think he's the right person to be leading Israel right now? <laughs> Uh, I think that issue should come up at the end of this, not right now. I think Israel is fighting as a country against a horrible attack from a terror group, which sadly uh, was able to metastasize uh, out of sight in the last couple of years, and and these brutal attacks have to be uh, uh, responded to. So that is what Israel's doing. I think at the same time, though, that the prime minister has to be part of a team in his country. It was wrong of him, and he apologized, which I thought was proper, two days ago, to blame his security uh, forces for the problems that led to the attack. It was an intelligence failure. It was a military failure. It was a government failure. And Israel has a history of governments taking responsibility, so I think that's what will happen later. It does occur to me, speaking of taking responsibility, that the neighborhood ought to be taking some more responsibility here. If the end game, and I think the end game should be, should be, uh, two states, uh, a Palestinian state and an Israel, Israeli state side by side, not run by Hamas, run by a responsible Palestinian authority which has recognized the right of Israel to exist, then the neighborhood ought to be pressing for this. And for example, Qatar, uh, where the, the political head of Hamas lives, uh, is doing something to get some hostages released, but ought to do more uh, to to support an endgame. I think Qatar could do a lot more, because it has very strong relations with Iran, which is obviously trying to blow up this endgame. But I think Qatar has more leverage than it's using. I feel the same way about Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and other uh, uh, Sunni countries. And I was kind of sad to see the comments in, in Jordan. I have to say that. Jordan, a country I love and have visited many times, uh, to some extent weighing in uh, here, there, uh, in, a, in a way that made Israel look like the aggressor. Um, there, you have to keep two things in mind. Number one, Israel has a right to defend itself. It was mercilessly attacked. We responded the same way on 9-11. I voted for the resolution to go after those who attacked us, which is exactly what Israel wants to do. The other thing to keep in mind is to protect innocent human life, wherever it is. And both things need to be accomplished. So to that end, uh, we heard today from Israel that 239 people are now thought to be held by Hamas. Congresswoman, uh, more troops went into Gaza this morning. I just wonder, as you think yeah. uh, end game here, what's going to happen in the immediate term? What is this next phase going to look like over the next couple of days? Uh, well, I, uh, I just heard Seth Moulton talk about it. He's a combat veteran. I'm not. Um, mm -hmm. I certainly have a lot of experience with defense and security policy, but I don't have experience uh, going in armed into tunnels in the dark uh, where sure. there may be hostages, but also innocent civilians. So I really can't call that. Uh, I think the goal of Israel is, uh, stated goal, is to go after Hamas leadership not to go after the human shields, some of them hostages and some of them, sadly, unfortunately, uh, living in Gaza and, and uh, whose lives don't seem to matter to Hamas leadership. Uh, I, I, and I, I think, as Seth said, uh, Israel, the Israeli uh, defense forces are highly trained to do this mission as carefully as possible. But am I worried? Of course I'm worried. And, and do we need to talk about the day after? Absolutely. I mean, this just cannot be uh, violence for violence for violence. This has to be violence for a political settlement, uh, not tomorrow, not a ceasefire. I don't think that's appropriate. But with supplies coming into the country, humanitarian supplies, which President Biden has called for, coming into Gaza, uh, while some military activity occurs to eliminate Hamas uh, as, as the Hamas leadership, and then immediately some more sensible government uh, in Gaza and uh, a, a plan to get to a two-state solution, which is U.S. policy and certainly is something that the Palestinian Authority, an elected government which governs the West Bank, has supported. Well, you may not have experience in combat, but you certainly do in Congress. At an event in Louisville today, um, Mitch McConnell was standing with Ukrainian ambassador Oksana Makarova, yeah. and he offered support for funding for Ukraine as well. Take a listen. Of course, Russian victory would embolden Putin's growing alliance with fellow authoritarian regimes in Iran and China. 
Think of it as an axis, an axis of evil. China, Russia, and Iran. The path toward greater security for all of us is simple. Help Ukraine win the war. Senate Minority Leader McConnell wants a big aid package. He agrees with the White House. He's looking at power dynamics around the world. But Speaker Johnson is just going to put the Israeli aid on the floor. Do you see individual bills being passed? I, I think that's a hard slog. Um, I think Israel may be top of mind right now, but Ukraine is top of mind, too. Mitch McConnell is an experienced dealmaker. Deals get done the way he's talking about it. Three countries plus the border is the right aid package. It's what President Biden also supports. What I worry about is that we're going to, the House will play tit for tat. We're going to offset here. We're going to make you cringe there. And what will get lost, possibly, is aid for Israel. I don't think so. But aid for Ukraine. And Mitch McConnell is exactly right, and so is the brave and wonderful Ukrainian ambassador to the U.S., that this is an existential threat for the West, not just for Ukraine. If Russia isn't stopped here, Russia won't be stopped. And we can't withdraw support as the winter uh, dawns in, in Ukraine. And uh, our allies in Europe and, and NATO, which has, has been repurposed by all this, are counting on us to do our share. U.S. leadership is being tested everywhere. Uh, I think President Biden has stepped up uh, very well, and I think Mitch McConnell stepped up today. And I hope that the new Speaker of the House will also step up. He does understand uh, uh, some of these uh, foreign situations. He's not as experienced as they are. But the right move, my view, is to set up a fiscal commission, which I understand he was supportive of, I hope he still is, to deal with these budget problems. We do need a balanced budget. We do need a responsible spending policy. But let's not do it on the backs of the Ukrainians who urgently need help that we have promised them.